We're off on a Sunday drive. Brought to you by Toyota. If you're looking for a road trip into yesteryear, our Lee Cowan has found a destination that, instead of being off the beaten path, is actually right next to it. Before I-78 was I-78, back when folks weren't in such a hurry, this roadside attraction, called Roadside America, had motorists tapping the brakes. You could barely find a parking spot when it opened in 1953, just outside Charlottesville, Pennsylvania. The curious passed under the same sign then that still hangs today. Who enters here will be taken by surprises. Surprises, plural. That's because once inside, there's a surprise around every turn. You can walk around 10 times and find something new every time you come around. Roadside America is a wonderland. Part miniature village, part model railroad. It's all the brainchild of one man, Lawrence Gehring, a carpenter by trade who began building scale models in the early 1900s. They soon took over his entire living room. In 1938, Gehringer moved his display to an amusement park in Reading, Pennsylvania. But it outgrew that space, too. It now encompasses nearly 8,000 square feet, with 4,000 tiny residents living and working amid their hundreds of tiny handmade homes and businesses. To me, it's a testimonial for people who want to give up, don't give up. Because <laughs> this could happen. <laughs> Dolores Heinsen is Lawrence Gehringer's granddaughter. That's her with him back in the 1950s. It's an absolute time capsule of an era that's long gone. It does conjure simpler times. The square dance in the barn. The Esso gas station with its army of attendants and the church choir singing behind the intricately hand-painted windows. It represents what was, and it's changing so. Lawrence Gehringer passed away in 1963, and everything here has remained largely as he left it. I always feel it, it's him in here. You still feel that even now? And it's emotional for you, right? Because this was his life, and you're still the caretaker of it. That's what I am. She relies on a village to keep this village going. Jeff Marks is in charge of restoration. Yes, it's old school, it's old technology, but it evokes a feeling of, of childhood memories. <laughs> so this is your test track? Yes, it is. <laughs> Richard Pfeiffer is the railroad foreman, making sure all the O-gauge trains are on schedule and on track. These are running seven, eight hours a day, five days a week. So you start multiplying that out, you've got some serious mileage. There's no manual for any of this, few blueprints to follow, and little money for advertising, which may be why so much of the traffic keeps moving right on by. What's the hardest part? Oh, maintenance, taxes. I always say a business is like a pie, and constantly everybody's taking a bigger piece of the pie. <laughs> Truth is, that parking lot isn't as full as it once was. Tourists still come, but a lazy stroll through yesteryear has a lot of modern-day competition. So, after all these years, Dolores is putting Roadside America up for sale, hoping someone with deeper pockets than hers can preserve which she no longer can. Mr. Geringer himself operates the 96 switches which keep roadside America humming. It's not closing, she says. At least she hopes not. Whoever buys roadside America has to understand what her grandfather did. But the feeling of being a kid doesn't have to die, no matter the price. I always say this is like comfort food for the soul, to come here and feel nothing bad's going to happen. <laughs> safe, you know, it's a safe place.